Don't make this mistake when buying zoom lenses. Check this out. So what I have here is that I have a variable aperture zoom lens and I have a fixed aperture zoom lens. You need to be able to tell the difference between the two so that you will know which is the right zoom lens is right for you. But before we get to the differences between these two lenses, let's first talk about aperture. So what exactly is aperture? Well, aperture is the opening of the lens in which light is able to pass through to get to your camera sensor. And the effect that it does to your photo is what's called the depth of field. Without getting too technical over here, in layman's terms, it talks about about those blurry backgrounds that you can see from photos and videos. To put it into basic terms, when it comes to aperture, the lower number that you have, it means that there's a bigger opening or a wider opening in your lens, you're letting more light in, and you have more of the blurry effect in your photos or videos. And then it goes the opposite when you have a bigger number on your aperture. So if you have a bigger number in your aperture or f-stop, it means that the opening of the lens is narrow and you have more focus on your area, but you're not letting a lot of light in and you don't have a lot of blurry background. So check this out, this is what I mean. So this is what I mean, that if you have the lower number over here, my lowest number is f1.4, it means there's a lot of light in the recording and there's a lot of blurry background over there. But as we continue to increase the aperture, so now we're heading into the bigger number, or we can see that the the video is getting darker but now it's getting more focused on our video here and on our subject lots of light not not as not as uh, focused on the name there but it's focused in the middle but the more we go increase our number for our aperture we can see that right here the name is getting clearer not as much blurry background, not as much light in, but you have you do have more of a focus uh, on the subject there. But why is aperture even important when buying zoom lenses? Well, because light and blurry background are your biggest problems when it comes to variable zoom lenses. And here's why. But before we get to the rest of the video, social media plays such a big part in photography. And if you're interested in landing a career as social media marketer, or if you feel like your experience is holding you back from getting the career that you really, really want, then I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University or SNHU. SNHU is one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the nation. And I wanna to talk to you about their bachelor's degree in social media marketing. In this program, we learn how to use social media to engage consumers build loyalty and drive business this is a great program if you want to be a content creator community manager or a social media strategist and with this program you'll learn vital digital marketing skills such as SEO and how to run advertising campaigns what's great with SNHU is that they have multiple terms that start throughout the year so you can complete your degree at your own pace and they have 24 7 accessibility so you can attend class whenever it's convenient for you what's also great with SNHU is they have one of the lowest rates in the nation so you cannot really go wrong wrong with SNHU. So use my link snhu.edu slash Timoteo and the link is also in the description below where you can find free information regarding the bachelor's degree in social media marketing. When you press that free information, a real person will hop on a call and discuss how the program will benefit you personally. So to help out this channel, use my link snhu.edu slash Timoteo and the link again is in the description below where you can find free information regarding the bachelor's degree in social media marketing. Thank you SNHU an issue for sponsoring this video and now let's go back to the variable zoom lens and the fixed aperture zoom lens so this is a variable zoom lens which means that as you zoom in the aperture or f-stop changes as well from the numbers over here it says that it starts at f 4.5 at 55 millimeter focal length and once you get to the 210 millimeter focal length your ending f-stop is at 6.3 and because of what we know about aperture that means that as you zoom in you're also not letting more light and you're also losing the blurry background effect and if you've been taking photos for a while, this can be quite annoying because when it comes to variable zoom lenses, the settings that you start with 
isn't going to be the same when you zoom in and they can cause issues with your exposure and what kind of photos that you're trying to achieve. Now why are these lenses available to buy anyways? Well, for two reasons and the first one is that variable zoom lenses are typically lighter than the fixed aperture zoom lenses because of the construction of the lens and once again it's because of the construction of the lens. The second reason is that the variable zoom lenses are typically a lot cheaper than fixed aperture zoom lenses. So as we compare these two, we can tell that the variable zoom lens is so much skinnier than the fixed aperture zoom lens. And the variable zoom lens is feels so much lighter compared to the fixed aperture zoom lens. So those are the big differences between the two. Now we're not going to go in depth with fixed aperture zoom lenses because basically whatever the variable zoom lens is unable to do, the fixed aperture zoom lens is able to do. So by specs, capability, and practicality, the fixed aperture zoom zoom lens is the way to go but is that always the case the problem with fixed aperture zoom lenses is that they're typically expensive depending on what kind of zoom lens that you want to get they typically range from one thousand to three thousand dollars canadian and for an average consumer that is very expensive for one lens so if budget is in your consideration on what kind of zoom lens that you want to get variable zoom lenses can be an option because of how expensive fixed aperture zoom lenses can be second it really depends on what you want to use the lens for for. If you want to shoot wildlife during the day and you have plenty of lighting all around you, you can probably get away with variable zoom lenses because you don't have to worry about lighting. You typically don't want to use a variable zoom lens in low light situations. Now, it is not impossible for sure, but at the same time, it's not really practical. And it can be an advantage for you if you use a variable zoom lens when you shoot wildlife because as you zoom in, your f-stop increases, which means lessening the depth of field and it leads to a more focused photo compared to fixed aperture zoom lenses where you can have trouble focusing on your subject. The problem with variable zoom lenses right is that when you zoom in your aperture changes which means it leads to less light so when you're photographing uh, wildlife sometimes it takes a while for you to take a photo with variable zoom lenses now let's stick around because later in this video i'm going to show you how you can fix that uh, how you can shoot faster wildlife with a variable zoom lens so stick around for that now if you're going to use a zoom lens where you need to have constant aperture because the let's say the lighting is limited in the area or you need to capture shallow depth of field moments such as in weddings or sports then the fixed aperture zoom lens is the way to go so it all comes back to what are you going to use this lens for but if you want to know my opinion i believe that fixed aperture zoom lens are more practical and the way to go but that doesn't mean that variable zoom lens have no place in photography in fact there are some cases where variable zoom lenses can be an advantage for you so check this out all you need to do is set your camera into manual mode. First, set up your shutter speed and a good rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to 1 over 200 to 1 over 500 to minimize any camera shakes and it leads to a good sharp photo. Then set your ISO to auto. Because your aperture varies as you zoom in, the camera will adjust your ISO for you so you will have a proper exposed photo. So my overall thoughts is that fixed aperture zoom lenses are the way to go. If you have the budget to buy a fixed aperture zoom lens, I believe that you should go for it. But if you don't have the budget for those kinds of lenses, then variable zoom lenses can be an option for you. Just remember that there's limitations to these lenses, but you can still create great photos with a variable zoom lens. Now click here to see why the Tamron 17 to 70 is the best lens and one lens that can do it all for both photos and videos. See you in the next video.